Good evening, Grace, and welcome to church. Welcome to worship. Welcome to this time when we gather together from our living rooms, our couches, our homes, from wherever we are to be church together. Welcome to this midweek pause when we pause our busy lives to listen for the voice of God that is active in our lives. We hope and pray that this worship service brings you peace, brings you joy, and brings you a moment of reflection, a moment to listen to God's voice active in your life and in the life of the church. We are coming at you tonight from one of our preschool classrooms. This as a reminder, serves as a reminder of the wonderful ministry that happens here and elsewhere in our building, as well as our Grace uh, Children's Center. We hope that being in this space tonight reminds you of that ministry, reminds you of the children that have walked these halls, the children that currently walk these halls, the joy and the education and the love that happens here. We are so blessed to be doing ministry in this way, blessed by those who are, served to, who are called to serve here, blessed by those who are learning here, both the students, the staff, the parents, everyone involved. We hope that being in this place serves as an amazing reminder of the goodness that happens here and in the Children's Center. Now, let us center ourselves. Let us enter into worship with a moment of prayer. And I would invite you to ground yourself however you do that best, whether that's a deep breath or standing and stretching or simply settling into wherever you are seated. You are welcome in this prayer time to enter into reflection and deep listening. Now, let us pray. You are the God who makes a way when there is no way. Free us from our anxious stubbornness and our impoverished imaginations. Open us to your newness, the gospel gift given over and over and over again. Amen. Oh, 
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. And God's people say, Amen. Well, for tonight, I read Jeremiah chapter 31. And you heard these verses on Sunday as well. But important verses that lead and guide us as God's people. It's all about the new covenant. It says, The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord.
a powerful prayer. And one that, when prayed, certainly challenges us. I'm going to say those words that you just saw in the video. I welcome everything that comes to me today because I know it's for my healing. I welcome all thoughts, feelings, emotions, persons, situations, and conditions. I let go of my desire for power and control. I let go of my desire for affection and esteem, approval, and pleasure. I let go of my desire for survival and security. I let go of my desire to change any situation, condition, person, or even myself. I open to the love and presence of God and God's action within. Amen. Well, I think the last petition of this prayer, I open to the love and presence of God and God's action within. It makes the rest possible. Notice I did not say comfortable, but possible. So often throughout life, we have a grip, a tight grip on our sacred sense of control. It is rare to run into somebody who says, oh, not love, not me, I, I love being out of control. <laughs> and if they do lead with that, I love being out of control, um, okay, check the safety measures around you because things might get a bit too, shall we say, interesting in your life. Letting go, letting go. That may just be a spiritual gift and one that takes honing and submission and prayer and, and, and some kind of crazy God movement in our lives. Notice again, I welcome all thoughts, feelings, emotions, situations, and conditions. That means everything. The good, the bad, the tragic, the really, really hard, the lowest of lows, and the highest of highs. So, so, so much. And if we are honest, all of this does indeed flow through us. Even when we try to run from and take cover from and hide from, everything seems to find us, doesn't it? It's all part of this thing called life. And the love and presence of God, it enters in there. God never apart from every aspect of our lives. I think this has been so apparent this last year in the work of our child care center and in our school where we're filming here today. Talk about feeling out of control. One year of everything the world could throw at us. And yet here we are still in the midst of COVID with extra cleaning, extra clothing, families in and out, so many frontline workers, closures, openings, state mandates, abundant times and lead times, staff concerns, enrollments up and down. And God continues to move us. The love and presence of God in our staff and families and church community always nudging us forward. Only grace. Only grace. God's covenant of life and love sustains. And that's why we say all thanks and praise be to God, because it truly does sustain. Now, if I say to you, you are out of control. You're out of control. It does not come across as a compliment, does it? And so I want to add to that phrase tonight for you to consider. You are out of control in God's grace. You are out of control loving disciples of Jesus. You are out of control in bringing life to the world. You are out of control with your generosity and attitude of gratitude. You are out of control in love with Jesus. 
You are out of control with forgiveness and hope. You are out of control in serving the needs around you. You are out of control in loving God and loving neighbor. Well, that sounds like good news. Good, good news to me. Are you warming up to being out of control in a new way? To embracing vulnerability? Remember, God's action within you. God's action within you. You are asking God to go to work and make it possible. The God of the gospel of Jesus always brings life out of death. God makes all things new, even when the world tries to convince us differently. Our Easter proclamation spills out from the tomb that because Jesus lives, we are going to live too. Death has no more power over God's will for life. The God of the gospel gives us a future and a hope. Jesus is on the loose. And because he's on the loose, we're on the loose. Yes, free to be out of control with radical trust in God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We fully welcome, welcome, welcome you. Well, all right, out of control disciples. Yes, out of control disciples. May God bless you and be gracious to you. May God give you grace to never sell yourself or God short. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. May God take your mind and think through it. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your hands and do good with them. May God take your heart and set it on fire. Yes, God in your heart on fire. And God's people say, Amen.
Now, dear church, let us again enter into prayer. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, dear church, receive this blessing. <laughs> 